come to terms with the defeat. The English rugby journalist Ali Stokes gave me his take on the match and how England struggled to get through the South African defence. No, they couldn't. I mean, there were high hopes for England this week going in with all that attack they showed last week. But like you say, that was a, just a wall of defence from South Africa. They couldn't break down. They, they forced errors out of England that we haven't seen for some time now. It was, it was an exceptional performance from South Africa and just... I mean, everyone's looking at this team now and it's kind of hard. It's hard to feel too downhearted because it's a fantastic win for South Africa and a convincing, convincing champion side. So tell us a little bit more about that. How far has the South African team come since those, those days just after apartheid in 1995 when hopes were so high for South Africa? Do you think there was a day where uh, people were saying the Springbok Blazer was only for the white man? And now you have Sir Galisi, their first ever black captain, lifting that trophy. A team full of, you know, a mixed race, white, black players. And they, they were so convincing and they were all there on the grace of their, of their skills. And it, it, can, it, it can fix so much in a country. It can show people that the kind of togetherness they can have. It, 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 can, it can bring people together. It can, it can show them really, you know, what can be achieved when everyone comes together. And that is exactly what Sir Ecclesi embodies. He's a man who came, who came from, the, from the townships. He couldn't watch the 2007 World Cup final home because he didn't have a TV, had to go to a tavern. It's, I mean, you read this guy's story, it's, it's, it's sensational. Indeed, and it's incredibly uh, physical sport, of course, rugby. We saw an injury within, what, three minutes of the game beginning. Uh, how big a problem are head injuries and serious injuries for rugby? And uh, have there been any improvements on that front? There has been huge improvements recently. There's been a big, big crackdown on, on head injuries. I mean, as we saw, Carl Sinclair, England's head prop, went down, knocked out straight away within the first few seconds, and he had to go. That was it. That end of his game, he's done. And rugby is trying to crack down on that because we know that later in life, these perpetual head injuries or just blows to the body that make that brain sort of move about on the skull it can have long-term issues huge like huge issues later in life and so they've cracked down on it that's it Carl Singer his game is done and we've seen a lot of red cards and yellow cards in the tournament because the rugby is trying to avoid damaging players any more than is necessary rugby is going to be a risky sport we know that but we need to find a level of protecting players whilst continuing the game Ali, this was the first Rugby World Cup held in Asia. Japan seen as a very successful host for this tournament. Uh, how big an impact has this World Cup had in Japan and Asia more broadly for rugby? I think it's massive. I mean, we look at the millions of viewers the Japanese had for their games, for their big games, and actually the fact the way they played is, is massive because they prove that you don't have to have these big Goliath players in your team. If you get things done at speed, if you do them accurately, you can pull teams apart. Ultimately, they fell to the champions in the quarterfinal, South Africa, but they captured the hearts of the world, not just their own nation. I think it kind of shows that also rugby is opening up a little bit. It's, it's leaning towards a more creative side of things, and it really shows that rugby, that old adage of the you know, game for all shapes and sizes, it still rings true. And the Japanese, I mean, they're the neutrals' favourite. I mean, everyone was pretty gutted when they went out. <laughs> I mean, if they're going to lose to a team, it, you know, South Africa was kind of the team you'd, you'd be happy with them to lose to, but they were just a team that have kind of done something, something similar in the rugby world that, that South Africa have done within their own country. They've united everyone. They've, they've realised that, hey, look what attractive rugby can do. Look how much joy it brings us. And I think in Asia especially, it really shows what, what, what that sport can offer, you know, in, a, in a, maybe an area that hasn't been traditionally massive in the rugby. And that was British rugby journalist Ali Stokes. We'll have more on the World Cup final.